All right, YouTube friends, if you know my channel, you've seen this tractor on it a few times. This thing has been my buddy for like 43 years. I bought it in uh, 76, 77, something like that, when I was just a wee lad. And I have continually kind of fought with the front end being a bit loose, but I think it's really gotten bad lately. And you know, this thing is getting tough to herd down the road. And look at here. I mean, if you look at this, where this comes down, boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, it's just all over the map, and it looks like there's no bearings left in there or whatever it's supposed to be in there. I don't know. I haven't tore it apart yet, but we'll find out together, I guess. This is going to be a fantastic opportunity to get in here and carefully clean out some of this. So here's where you learn new things when you start taking thing, things apart, is that this looked like a solid plate with that almost, but really it's just a plate in here that you can take off. Four bolts are out of this little pan here and that hold this frame on. Now this pan should come out of here, I think. Like that. And now we can see down in here a little bit better. Not great, but at least we can get our hands in there. Lots of dirt. All of this, minus the gloves and the rags, was right in there. Check this out. There is not a thread in any of these holes. Look at the bolts that were in here. This is definitely a farmer fix. I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, but I'm starting out by taking off these bolts right here, and things seem to wiggle, and I don't know how this uh, shaft comes out over here. I guess we'll have a voyage of discovery here. All right, I'm going to pull this thing off if I can with one hand. And so evidently it doesn't really have a gear going all the way around, just on that one side there. You can see down in there, there's the worm gear. Next on this voyage of discovery will be to take off these four bolts are out. And this guy's coming off. So this is your way to adjust it. You can see that there's a groove cut in it right where my thumb is there and you can loosen the thing up and give it a turn and whatever and you can also see that look at how that thing is bent and pooched out and back to the end of it here what's behind there this little thing <clears throat> I dug around a little bit in there and I got these shards out of there not to mention all these little rollers from a bearing in there looking at this piece it's not obvious right away what it does but after taking it out you can see that it's non-concentric and so that means that when you turn it a bit, it basically adjusts the engagement of the worm gear against the main gear. I sat there and fought on this end for quite a while, even took the old air hammer out and tried to hammer this pin out, and it definitely was not going to come out. So, you know, when that happens, you just got to go with the next best thing, and this pin here is coming right out. All right, one last bolt out of there. Now we lift. Whoa, bang! All right, so this greasy, grimy thing is out of the tractor. And now I just have to figure out how to get the bearings out of this side apart. I don't think I've ever seen a pin so stubborn that it didn't want to come out. All that, and it barely moved. Maybe we'll have to take and heat it up. There's some grease there, and I'll start a fire. 
Some days I forget that I have a hydraulic press. There's not too much that stops this press. 50 ton. As you can see, I conquered it finally. This should slip right out of there now. At least we can see the race. And this is what I picked out of there. This could be another case where I don't necessarily know what I'm doing here. I'm going to see if I can push this out, maybe. Oh. Aha. Okay. Well, at least I've made enough destruction here where things are falling apart. So you can see there, behind there, was some kind of a seal which this whole thing was kind of destroyed here. Okay, things are starting to loosen up now, and I was able to you see this thing right here. That's just kind of a sleeve that turns in there, and I was able to turn it. I'm just gonna pop it right out, maybe. I'm gonna put you down and take that out of there. Now that I have this entire piece out of here, both pieces, I can see, and I still got the race in this one here, but I can see that this was originally all one piece and it's broke off right down in there and it should be somewhat obvious that this thing is like I said before non-concentric so when you turn it it would uh, turn the gears together after they've been worn through the years but both ends are supposed to turn together and as you can see here since this was busted off that wasn't happening anymore and well it had more problems than this thing for sure but uh, yeah this has definitely seen better days here so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that I don't think that's any kind of either metal that I can weld on at least I have this part that should be relatively simple to make. So I'm going to start remachining this plate part here, if I can get this apart. So here's the pieces that came out of that thing. You can see this piece here turns. Make an adjustment, um, I guess, to make sure that the that this isn't going back and forth that way, right? I mean, you could, you'd tighten it against the end with this little screw here. Seal was on here, like that, and this was pressed down on here. This, and then of course this was on top of here, and the nut was on top of there. I decided off camera to flatten this thing in the press rather than mill a new piece, even though it really wouldn't have been that hard to mill a new piece. Ended up doing a couple more things off camera here. Uh, one was to press this off of this shaft. And the reason why I did that is because it became apparent that these inside races were actually a part of this thing here. So these are not separate pieces, at least not on my tractor. They aren't. They're the same. And these were kind of a little bit beat up and dinged up whatever so I pressed this guy off and I put this in a lathe chucked it up and then took a cut off wheel on the grinder and ground these guys off of there because you're not going to lathe these off at least not with the stuff I have because this is hard hardened hard 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 so I got that off of there um, and then the new bearings here so there's the new inside race, which will just go up against there like that. Okay, one on each side. And this will go on the other side there. This new this shaft here will have to be remade. And because this is bigger diameter ID than the OD of the shaft. So I have to remake this and remake a little spot for this to sit according to its diameter right up against here and then i'll have to take and make some kind of a little 
ring to press fit on the end here to make up the size difference to put this on this end and hopefully this will all work out the way it's supposed to we shall see all right now I'm going to show you the other thing that I'm doing here kind of in the middle of the project and of course this is the other beast that I'm in the middle of making so like I said that's non-concentric there and the bearing races are held out here in here and there's these notches here and then this portion here is a little bit less diameter i guess if you will than where these bearing races are held again off camera i have done the lathe work on this piece here you can see it's non-concentric and it's not obvious but there's some differences in diameter across here just like this one is and they match up pretty good and this thing here fits into this piece like it should um, possible that I may have to mill or uh, lathe this face this down just a little bit to get this to match exactly I don't know I gotta look at that but it's pretty close pretty close yes so now we're gonna start uh, on the mill cutting this out so we just have this you know this bolt shape when we're done here I finished up some lathe work here and I have it set so this inner race of this bearing will fit on this part right here. This thing will fit over here very snugly, probably pressed on with heat and so on. I just have to finish cutting a, um, a keyway slot in there, a shallow one. This will fit on top of this which will fit on top of this all dimension to uh, probably require a little bit of heat to persuade those on and be nice and tight and then i will cut this off on the end once it's on the end cut the whole thing off and tack a little weld on there just to uh, secure the end of it right now I'm not sure what I'm gonna do get down here a little ball of shavings in there oh boy what do you do with that anyway I don't know this is something I had not considered I did get this pressed on, but in the process, I didn't take into account that when I was pressing, because of all these little grooves in here, this being a part of this originally, um, it was pushing uh, chunks of metal ahead. So by the time I got down here, I had to get in there with a hacksaw grinder whatever would fit in there and kind of get those chunks out and then and then set this up this little inside bearing race up against this worm gear um so that was kind of an unforeseen thing not sure what i would have done better about it but looks like it's on there now all right next thing i'm going to do is press on this little shim here that will hold that bearing race on. So I think what I'll do is again, give us a little bit of heat. Come on, torture. Oh, 
that's all together. Okay, so we got a bearing race that's going to go in the end of this thing. Alright, so I got one bearing race in the end of this. And put this on here, like so. Put this in here. Like so, okay, hopefully that's showing up on here, so I got that situated, now I need to put this in here, alright, this bearing race has got to go in here, okay, I need a piece of aluminum, aluminum, We're going to pop this guy in here. Okay. Ooh. Go just a skosh more. Proper hammer for the job. It's almost an eighth of an inch gap. Maybe like a hundred thousands that I have to make up between here. So I think this is where I'm just going to have to make a piece like this that stacks on top of here. Voila! We have ourselves a shim! It'll grease. Gasket sealer sets up a little bit and then we'll tighten it down. Okay, so what I'm going to do to adjust this is tighten it down pretty hard, somewhat hard, and then back it off just a little bit. There we go. Okay. I'll finish tightening all these gizmos later. Alright, so I bought this seal here, and I can't be sure that it's 100% the right thing, but I think so. Ready or not, here it goes. Pop in there. I have bought me a, where is it, a little set collar here, and I'll just leave a little bit of a gap there. Back it up just a little hair. Okay. It's kind of a weird angle, but. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put this in the mill and pop a little hole in here. Alright, so we got a hole popped in there.
All right, well, I'm not going to swell my head with pride about this thing, but uh, there it is. up in here and okay. stick it off to the side there there was a lot of consternation getting this thing on and let's just say that I have deleted the footage. Give it a little press down of that blue stuff on our TV. And then let's see if we can set this down on there. And get a bolt started. Maybe. And another bolt back here. Bolt back there. And one more and then we'll do some tightening. Filling and spilling. I'm just putting uh, 10W30 in here. Alright, the wheels are back on. Everything is in. Universal joint is in. I is going to let this thing down and maybe see if I can back it out of here. <laughs> 